So in this video, we're going to talk about non-stick pans versus cast iron, the pros and cons, and I'm going to go through and tell you what I think and my experience, my opinions on these two things. So first we'll talk about cast iron. Uh, so cast iron, some of the pros, it is very inexpensive. Um, I think this costs like $14, this is a six inch, and the big one costs like $24 or something like that. Um, I just recently looked up the prices. Um, pro tip, the prices of cast iron tend to be cheaper on, at Target or online Target or in-person Target compared to Amazon is what I have found. But they sell these everywhere. Um, these are all of mine are Lodge brand, which is like probably the most common brand that you'll find. But you can also get them at like an antique store or something if you want to go, go really, really vintage on there. Um, so let's talk about cast iron. So cast iron is naturally non-stick. It's made out of iron. and the way that it's non-stick is that it has a seasoning on it. So the seasoning is actually just oil that has been heated up to create a non-stick layer. Um, so over time, the seasoning wears off, right? And so then you might have to re-season it. Uh, but I like to know that the non-stick part of it is actually just oil, which is something I would already consume. Compared to a non-stick pan that is, you know, non like marketed as a non-stick pan, it has some kind of layer of something that makes it non-stick. And so, you know, there's different ones that you should avoid. And if you go down the internet rabbit hole on this, which I have done many times, you start to be like, oh my God, I have no idea what to buy. Like, there's so many things. How do I know that this one's better than that one? And the one that was okay five years ago is no longer okay and blah, 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 blah. It's, it's overwhelming. Um, so I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know what to make of it, which materials are not good. Um, but I do, want to use a non-stick pan for certain types of things that you really, really want to be non-stick. So the example of that, best example, is scrambled eggs. Especially if you're making a soft scramble, you really want a non-stick pan. Um, and so all non-stick pans, this, the, as you use them over time, whatever they're putting on here that makes it non-stick is kind of wearing down. And so I've gone through many a non-stick pan, and over time, they start things start to stick to them, even if you follow the instructions and you know, you don't use metal on it or whatever. And so you can't really tell, but this one, like there starts to be little stains and like little things. And I notice that when I cook my scrambled eggs, there'll be like a little patch where it's, it's kind of sticky and it's not doing its nonstick duties. So I think that they all <laughs> deteriorate over time. And so I try to use this only when I really, really, really need it for the nonstick things. So especially scrambled eggs. Um, so this is a cheap one. This is just green pan, which is supposed to be one of the good ones, but they're, they all, they come in all different price ranges. This green pan has like different lines of lots of different price ranges. They have a fancy one on food 52 and they have a cheap one at target, which is what this is. Um, so the thing about the nonstick pans and what makes them cheaper is that oftentimes for the cheaper ones, the handle will be made out of plastic. So this handle is made out of plastic and over time, as you continue to cook and you're using heat, the plastic can burn and you can see that it's kind of burned right now. Um, you know, it's not directly on the heat, but it's still hot. It's on the stove you're cooking with it, right? And so this, I think, starts to smell and I don't like that smell. Um, and you, if you get it too hot, you know, then this thing starts to like break down and burn. Um, so the fancier, more expensive nonstick pans probably have like a metal handle or a more durable handle, but this is one way where they save money on the cost of it is by making a cheap handle, which also means you can't put it in the oven. Um, not that you would do that with this, but that's just a thing to think about. So honestly, I don't have a nonstick pan that I love. Um, I am continuing to look for one that I would recommend. I'm not going to recommend something to you that I don't absolutely love. So this is just happens to be the one that I'm using from Target. Um, I also, just a quick caveat. When I bought this pan, uh, it came with a set with a smaller pan. And I was using the smaller pan more often because that was actually more of a normal size that I would use just cooking for one. But um, you know, over the course of a few months, maybe six months, um, it started to be sticky. And so it wasn't serving its purpose anymore and it got all stained and so I got rid of it. Um, so I'm on my second one of the green pan. So that's your non-stick pan. Um, also, if you are using this, make sure you definitely, definitely do not use metal on it. That scratches the surface and makes it non-sticky anymore. And if you have one of these that has like a bunch of scratches in there, I would definitely get a new one because the scratches mean that the coating is broken and it's probably releasing into your food, which, you know, whether, I mean, I don't think it's gonna kill you. Like it's not probably fine. You're resilient and your body probably can handle it, but um, just not ideal. Okay, let's talk about cast iron, <laughs> which is my favorite thing to cook with. Um, but it does have its pros and cons. So 
you know, the pros are it's very cheap and it lasts forever because you just, as the surface wears down, you just re-season it. And um, when, when you say season it, all you do is you literally rub oil on it and then you bake it in the oven at 350 for like an hour. I just, I do that whenever it's starting to be non-sticky or I can, I can tell that like some of it's worn off. Um, I re-season it, it's no big deal, it's super easy. I mean, yes, it's another step, but like if you're cooking a lot, an hour in the oven with some oil is no big deal. So cast iron is obviously heavy, um, so that's you know not super convenient to lift it up. You get a little bit of a workout, but hey, burn some calories, not a big deal. Um, the great thing about cast iron is it can go in the ovens. You can also use it just like a baking dish. And I will oftentimes bake in this 10 inch, which is the same, roughly the same size as like a pie dish. Um, so I bake like flatbread or um, breads in here. I bake, you know, crumbles or crisps sometimes. Um, so it's a really multi-use, multi-function. And again, they really do last forever if you treat them well. And you can always recover them too if they get rusty or anything like that. There's just Google it. There's plenty of instructions online um, on what to do. So they are heavier, right? And so, um, so let's talk about how to care for them. So I have a six, six inch, I think. This is like a 10 and a half or something like that. And this is the 12, which is big. Um, okay, so this one, obviously, you saw me earlier, maybe like, if you need two hands to lift this thing, it's, it's pretty heavy. Um, but uh, let me tell you how I use my cast iron. So, one of the other pros about cast iron is it gets really, really hot. And that is ideal because that gives us our nice browning that we want in our saute. Um, it also retains heat really well and it, it heats pretty evenly compared to certain other types of pots. So that's one of the, those are some of the benefits of it. Um, so if you make a saute every day, like me, <laughs> for breakfast every morning I make a saute, these are just kind of they live on my stove. So I just leave them on the stove all the time. And um, if you keep it well treated and you keep it nonstick and you cook with enough oil, um, it's pretty, it stays pretty clean and I actually just wash it like once a week. So that might sound gross to you, but these two are actually both dirty. I wanted to show you. So there's like, you can see maybe a tiny bit of food residue in there, but um, I just used these this morning, so I didn't wash them yet, but I made a saute, I use enough oil, and I keep it pretty clean, and so because I'm going to just use it again tomorrow morning for my next saute, um, they get so hot and you heat them up before you start cooking with them that it actually kills all the germs or any germs that will be in there. And so if I have something that made some more residue, I'll just scoop it out um, or wipe, wipe it out really quickly before I reheat and use it again. And so um, I will often cook my fried eggs in this little guy. Um, to keep them separate so I can manage the temperature appropriately, but sometimes I'll just do my whole saute in this big one. Uh, and it just, it just stays on the stove, and I'm also, I don't actually like lift it up very often except for to clean it. Um, but it just lives on the stove, I use a spatula, I get everything out, and um, I love my cast iron. So, if you are going to use the cast iron, or if you're considering investing in one, I would start with this and just use it to fry your eggs, because it makes really great crispy bottomed fried eggs. Um, or you can just practice doing like a little mini saute in here if you would like. Um, if you are gonna get the cast iron, you do need a few accessories that I would recommend. Uh, or you don't necessarily need them, but I would recommend them, it makes your life a lot easier. So the first thing is you need to protect your hand because these handles are heat proof. Um, they are also made of cast iron, and so that's one reason this can go in the oven because the handle is also made of cast iron, but it also makes the handle gets hot and you can't just lift this up. Um, but again, like I said, I don't really lift them, so it's really more just moving it to the side, but you don't want to touch that, you'll burn yourself. So you need to have something, or you can just use a, a dish towel or whatever, or like a, an oven mitt to move it, but it's kind of nice to have something on there to remind yourself not to grab it. So I have these little um, handle covers, and these ones are made out of felt. You can see that it gets burned on the edge, so I don't know how great of a design this is, but. Uh, I did have the one that Lodge sells, this company that makes these cast iron pans sells like a silicone one, and I did not think it worked very well, so I actually prefer these. But um, you can't, they're, 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 not, they're not perfect, okay? So I don't know that I really recommend them, I just recommend something. Um, these are the best ones I've found so far, but they're honestly not perfect. But anyway, you put this on there and you don't actually want it to touch the hot, hot, hot part. You kind of want to keep it like on the end like that. But at least, even if you don't even touch it, it's just a reminder not to touch it. So. It's, it's useful in that, in that regard. Um, the main thing I would recommend also is to get one of these scrapers. So this is made by Lodge, the company that makes these, and it's made of plastic. Um, 
I'm trying to reduce my plastic so in the future I would get a wooden one. I've seen wooden ones online, but um, this is a very, very hard plastic. So you use this to scrape it up and this just gets off any little tidbits. And so sometimes like when my pan is really clean, which it pretty much is now, sometimes I'll just use this thing really quick, scrape off the little bits and um, rinse those off. And then I don't even, I don't even wash it. I just scrape them up. But if you have, if you sometimes will make things where this will really, where they will stick to the pan and so you need to like scrape up those things. So this is a great way to clean it. Honestly, you could also probably like use an old credit card, but um, this durable plastic is like much harder than a credit card, so it is better. And it, this one is nice, it has these little like curves to kind of get into the edges if you need that. I also like to use a brush. Um, I find that this does a really good job on the cast iron of like loosening everything up. Um, sometimes all I need to do is brush it. So if you're reading about cast iron, you might hear that you're never supposed to use soap. Um, eh, it's a loose, it's a loose rule, okay? You can use a little soap. You're not gonna like scrub it super, super crazy with soap because um, the soap like breaks down the seasoning, but you probably are intermittently gonna need to rebuild the seasoning anyway. So um, like it's a loose rule. You can use a little soap, it's totally fine. Uh, another great way to clean it is to actually use kosher salt. So uh, the salt that I use, which we'll talk about soon, um, is a great way to clean it. So you just sprinkle a bunch of kosher salt, kosher salt super cheap, and you just like rub it into the pan and um, that helps loosen up any little like tidbits of the seasoning that's, or tidbits of um, food residue that are in there. So cast iron, if you're using it every day, if you're making a lot of sautés, I think it's a really, really great purchase. Also, if you wanna just like try it and see how you feel, um, start to feel it out, see if it's worth your effort. Um, you know, this could be a great option just to fry your eggs in it. Um, if you, I mean, this this is probably a better usage because, or a better size to get just because you could use it as a baking dish uh, as well if you weren't gonna use it all the time. But um, if you're cooking for a bigger crowd, for more people, you might want either a combo of these two or the big one, depending on how many people you're sauteing for. But um, I use all of these pretty much every day and they rotate throughout my kitchen time and usage. So. Uh, yeah, that's, those are my thoughts on cast iron.